Good morning. You can have a seat. I'm excited to be here because today we get to read one of my favorite all-time Bible stories. One of my best favorites. One of your favorites, right? I think it's all her fault. If you don't like it, blame Kathy. Uh, and if you're inspired by this passage to, and you want to think more and you're, and, and, you're, and you're called to action, that's fantastic. If instead today your heart just glows with joy because the choir is back, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, don't, I don't know. Sometimes it's the scripture. Sometimes it's the song. Maybe it's a prayer today that you just feel blessed by. Whatever it might be today, I hope that you are able to enter here uh, with an open spirit for where God's voice lands in your soul. So let us take a moment to breathe. Let us take a moment to let go of those things that have followed us all week. Let us take a moment to rest silence and calm in our hearts. And we come to worship God. Would you please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. If we can get on the right side of world resurrection, We must rapidly begin to shift from a culture of things and to ourselves to caring for persons. A true resurrection of values will cause, will cause us to question. The giant triplets of racism, materialism, and militarism. We worship a God of compassion and justice. We worship a God who transforms spirit. And friends, let's pass the peace for this beautiful day to those who are watching online and share that peace with your neighbors.
words of the Lord. Rise, Israel. That's him over there. Rise, Israel. Plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. That's you. You're the hills. Uh, hear, you mountains, the case of the Lord and listen, you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against God's people and God will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember, so that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before the God with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Now you all together. God has told you, O oh mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To do justice and love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. It's so good when Addie is here, so I have a friend on the rainbow. Anyone else who wants to come to the rainbow, come on up. And anyone who wants to go back and hang out with Olya and Addie and Rachel and Madison, we could use one more adult today helping out in the nursery, just by the way. Hey, um... 11 or 12 years old. Can you imagine what I looked like at 11 or 12 years old? I was a total late bloomer, but there were people in my seventh grade class. There was a guy named Terry. He had a mustache just like this. <laughs> Every middle school has guys like that. They, that's not fair. And well, um, Terry was a bully. Do you like bullies? Does anyone like bullies? Of course not. Terry was a bully to me. I didn't like that. And bullies come in all shapes and sizes. Some are shaped like Terry. Some bullies are shaped like racism, which hurts a lot of people. 
Some bullies are, they love it when people look away or they love it when people think, I don't want to talk about bullying. And so they get to do their thing. Now, in my case, a teacher told on Terry, you know, someone was, a, someone was there to be an advocate. And, and I like to think that maybe Terry learned a lesson not to pick on people. And I think Terry might have a happier life now if he learned that, that lesson. But uh, all through the Bible, we deal with bullies. Uh, some bullies are kings, and they pick on people from other countries. Some bullies are rich, and they pick on poor people. Some bullies in the Bible try to twist God's word and say that God is a bully, which is just silly. But they say, they say that God is a bully against um, women or poor people or gay people or all kinds of people. But all through the Bible, God sends these special people called prophets to say, it's not right to bully anybody. Let's all say that together. It's not right to bully anybody. And uh, God sent prophets to stand up for the weaker people and to stand up to the bullies, right? He sent those, um, they never punched back. That's not what prophets did. But they sang songs and they did drama and they gave crazy speeches uh, so that they could tell everybody, no more bullying. Let's say that together. No more bullying. Yeah. Now, sometimes bullies stop and sometimes they learn and sometimes they get better, which is great. And other times, other times it just looks like bullies win. It looks like they're winning. And we might get sad to see people picked on more and more. But God is always on the side of people who are picked on. And God never gives up. God is not a God of giving up. So when you add those together, I think that means that love is always going to win. So do you want to be on the side of uh, God or of the bullies? Yeah, that's an easy one. Uh, me too. I want to be on that side. Um, me too? Me too? Me, me too? Me too. Me too? Yes, me too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, it's good to hear me too's uh, around bullying. Sometimes when me too's hang together, we can be a little stronger against those who are bullying. So let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for people, thank you for people who tell the good news, tell the good news. Of, your love of your love for everybody. For everybody. Amen. All right, thanks for being here, and Ollie is hanging out over there, and there's all kinds of... I think Susan's going to go back and help in the nursery, too. Thanks. I looked up Terry just to see what he's like these days. I think he's still bullying. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at his Facebook. Boy, you can tell a lot by someone by that. Mm. Okay, um, for this scripture, my fav one of my favorite ones, you've heard the context. The stage for Micah 6 is a, like a, a, a controversy, a legal controversy in a courtroom between God and, and God's people, and you were the jury, and you were the jury, the mountains and the hills. Okay. You've heard the conclusion. You know the, how it ends. You've sung the conclusion. Uh, they've sung the conclusion. You're going to sing it again. The, the band's going to sing a different version of the conclusion. You're going to be so sick of the conclusion, you're not going to want to sing it again, except next week you get to sing it again. And, uh, and then we'll start worship the next week with the same song and the next week and so on. Um, but you're going to get used to it. That The sentencing after, for the ones who are found guilty, that's us, is to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. That's the sentence. That's it's not a punishment, that's the sentence. Okay. So on one hand, that is such an obvious and beautiful spiritual message. I don't have to clarify much about that. I, I've looked it up. There's no translation issues with any of the words. There's nothing complicated. They mean what they say. So sometimes the best way to deal with a good story is to uh, leave it alone and just let it sit there all on its own. So Church, I could, I could leave it as it is, just the way Micah wrote it, and we could just move on to the next hymn. Should I just sit down now? No? Should, should we just put a period on the set sermon right now and we can just be done? No. You want to know more about justice and kindness and humility, right? You want to know more. Because, uh, on the other hand, last week, remember, hint number 18 about the Bible was assume they are layers of meaning. Assume that there are layers of meaning in most any story. It does, it's not like a necessary rule in the Bible, but God is evocative, and God is multifaceted, and God is big enough to have so many different perspectives. 
And more often than not, God's word is so rich that like if it's, if it's an orange and we just kept squeezing, like juice keeps coming out. Wisdom keeps coming out whenever we squeeze these stories more and more. So today we're gonna squeeze together to take some steps between the context that you now know and the conclusion that you've now memorized, and we're gonna see what else in the story speaks to us. What might be louder when we just look at just that? What might be whispering between the lines? What is it in this story that carries on forever? And what is it in this story that it might feel like Micah is just sitting at your kitchen table talking to you with your family and your worries and your struggles? So step one, first step. This is a story for God's people. This is a story for people who have signed up, I wanna follow that kind of life. This is not a story for other people who are not interested in that. This is not a story for people who do not already have a relationship with God. They are not hauled up in court in this, in this case. Now the story might capture their attention, and in fact, um, it does capture a lot of people's attention. It, the loudest Christians in the world today are kind of gross. And so when non-Christians see this phrase, do justice, love kindness, walk humbly, they think that's the kind of Christian I could put up with. That's the kind of faith life that seems better. That's the kind of church I might walk in that door on Christmas Eve uh, when I'm missing something about God in my life. So, so we are called to walk with our God. This is not a story where we're telling other people what they're supposed to do. Got it? Makes sense? Second step, um, when we say our God, this is not, it's not about Joanne and Kathy and me as an our. It's not individuals that become an us. It's not a command or a sentence for each one of us, like, like you do justice and then you do justice and, and then Joan has to figure out how to love kindness. No, this is a story about all of us as a collective. You and, you and I, I'm not the one standing up in court, and you're not the one standing up in court. The nation of Israel is the one with a case against God. The people collectively were in a court case against God. This is not a story but about what you can do with your singular life. This is a mandate to a group of people connected to a shared principle. It's a mandate about how we live together, about how we are supposed to shape society together. Now, the word Cornell West is a professor and a scholar and all that. He put it this way. He said, justice is what love feels like in public. Justice is what love feels like in public. So, so Micah 6 is about all of us who want to follow God committing to a social vision. Now, I did not say socialism. I said social vision. Did Google get that right? I don't know. Yeah, it's, I think so. It's a big old ism right there. Yeah. So all the time it happens in church. I've seen this happen in every church I've been in. I've heard a hint of it here once. Um, good people start to pay attention to Jesus a little closer. You know, a lot of folks, you, you have uh, maybe your, like your, your Sunday school from when you were a kid, and that's where it's founded, and that's a great place to start a foundation. And someone starts to read a little more, or, or you crack a Brian McLaren book, and you're, like, you're seeing something new about Jesus, and you have this, this little awkward laugh when the flicker comes through that, that Jesus wants to, wants to care for everybody, like everybody, and you think, oh, oh Jesus was a communist. I hear, I've heard it in every church I've ever been at. And I know what you mean, because Jesus is into equality and communal identity, and he said believers should share their possessions, and no one gets left out, and greed is a sin, and it sounds diametrically opposed to the capitalist religion in America. And I know why, we, I know why people laugh nervously, because Jesus, good, communism, bad, uh, I, can't, I can't put it together. Uh, and I love that, that people see, for many of you this is old hat, but I love when people discover that Jesus has a social vision for how we are supposed to live together by taking care of everybody. Because that's so much the point. But he's not a communist. I'm sorry. Sorry to break your hearts. He's not a communist. He's not a capitalist. Not a socialist. He's not a Democrat. He's not a Republican. He did ride a donkey once, but he's not on any of those parties at all. <laughs> So this is the word I've come up with. This is just me. Uh, I think Jesus was a communalist, a communalist. He does not want to govern how we take care of each other. He wants us to want to take care of each other. 
That's, that's the key. He wants us to care about taking care of each other. He is concerned about shaping the hearts that want to live for community rather than for our own success and our own livelihood. And the Bible has lots and lots and lots of rules about what you should not do, but Jesus takes a much further step and says, I give you freedom. This is a freedom to care for each other. What a powerful freedom that is. So much more powerful than some of the silly freedoms we think we have in America. Micah is just like Jesus, especially in this story. Micah has written this little drama for we the people to do justice. We the people are invited and sentenced to repent from the opposite, to repent from injustice. Micah is inviting us to step away from our focus on our individual self, which is, is so pervasive in America. It, Micah is inviting us to stop allowing our culture to prioritize the rich, stop letting society lurch toward efficiency, away from compassion, stop allowing people to abuse the land and stop all of that and turn around and go in a different direction. That's what repentance is. Stop doing this, turn around, go in a different direction. A direction of justice that cares for the environment, that supports an economy of poverty reduction, that prioritizes people who are marginalized and oppressed. Jesus, Micah, all the prophets, and this is, some, you are welcome to email me anytime you want, but don't waste your fingers on emailing me about preaching politics because it's on every page of Jesus and all the prophets. It's the whole point of Revelation. It's embedded in most of Paul. It's on the Old Testament history. It's definitely in a lot of the Psalms and the wisdom literature. I didn't leave out much, did I? It's almost on every page. If you crack a Bible at all, it takes real work to hide from the message that we as a nation, as a faith, as people committed to a vision together, Almost every page leads to the gospel truth that we are called to shape our lives by love. And that is personal, not private. It's public, not partisan, and it is political, but it doesn't need to be polarizing at all. The most simplest way to say it is God cares about how we live together. We're scared to face that. We are scared to face that around tables with relatives and friends. But God has suffused it through Jesus nearly every page of the Bible, and Micah says it with such poetic force. We are called as a people to do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with our God. Third step as we walk through these layers of Micah. Notice the verbs. Do justice, love kindness. It'd be a lot easier. Oh my gosh, it'd be a lot easier and it would offend a lot fewer people if we could just love the idea of justice and do a lot of kindness and just be nice to each other. Right? We, we've been around those people who are, they do a lot of kindness, but they don't want to think about the justice. It's a lot easier for us to do that, but prophets never go in for easy. Micah said that your sentencing is to enact justice, but do it in a way that is kind. A, a modern saint, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she, God rest her soul, she said it this way, same message. She said, fight for the things that you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. Right? Love kindness while you do justice. Now, none of this originated from RBG. None of it originated from Dolly Parton, Hanson Wendland, thank God. None of it, none of that. The end, the, the end of justice by the means of kindness, that comes from God from the beginning of human history. Whether you aspire to being woke or you hate that phrase, woke is a spiritual category as old as humankind itself. Fourth step. Who renders the verdict? Who renders the verdict in the sentence? The mountains and the hills and the foundations of earth are the judge and the jury, and they are the ones who speak for God. Now, some of you, if you're living here, you're probably into the mountains, but some of you are beach or lake people, uh, which would be great. It, at the same time as Micah was writing, Amos was writing, and Amos is pointed. Amos is so mad at the rich farmers stealing water from the poor subsistence farmers. It's like an, the first issue of agribusiness in the history of literature. Uh, and, and if you're into water, it's beautiful. You, you could have the water be the judge and the jury. But for Micah, there's something about the stability of hills and mountains that is breathtaking and grounding and, and lasts forever. And the Hebrew word, um, the, when we say Lord Almighty, you've seen that phrase in the Bible, Lord Almighty. The word almighty, it, all it means is mountainous. So what it says is the Lord mountainous. 
very, very masculine sense, right? Big, tough, man of the mountains, right? That's what it means. <laughs> but unfortunately, unfortunately, the word mountainous, the same root in Hebrew, you just change one little vowel. And in the Bible, they didn't actually have vowels. They didn't put those in for a few hundred years. So, so, so literally, some of you are going to like this. Lord Almighty, Lord Mountainous, what it really means is Lord of the Wild Mountain Women. So you wild women of the Wasatch, you're just Lord Almighty. This is the voice where Micah puts the sentence in the conclusion of his drama, the voice of the most powerful image he can think of, of mountains, of God. If nature is telling us to do justice, shouldn't we do justice for nature? Shouldn't environmental justice be a primary category for how we, the people, shape our society? Shouldn't environmental justice come from the voices of these wild women almighty who are protectors of the natural world? Fifth step, last one. Um, every spiritual community, every one of them, has a vision for how society should be shaped. This is one of the threads that undergirds what, the common threads of how everyone grows closer to God in community. Now, we can disagree. Do you all agree with me on everything I ever say? Amen if you've ever disagreed with me. Amen. Yeah, that's the loudest amen we've had in this church yet. Yeah. <laughs> God, like churches disagree. Christians disagree. People disagree about social vision everywhere. But the common thread is like these places we have a sanctified vision for how we think that God wants it on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, churches are not the only organization that has that power, but it is part of our DNA. Religious institutions like us, we are called to care for people. We have thousands of years of experience for how to do it. We have thousands of years of principles for how to do it with humility, not with aggression. With grace, not by any means possible. With hope that God will continue to work despite our failures. And rather than with fear that if we don't get this right, right now, nothing will ever be succeeded. Churches and spiritual communities, we are uniquely positioned by heeding Micah's call because we have the inspiration, we have the optimism that we can do justice, and therefore we will. So friends, do not give up that invitation and do not give up that power. Amen. be the band leader after playing God just a moment ago. That was pretty fun. Um, please stand if you're able and join us in singing Let Justice Roll Down.
Worldwide, Life of the Church. Um, several weeks ago, you can sit down there, uh, the men uh, tried to go do trivia. It didn't work, but there's still a lot of useless facts in our brains. That's what a lot of us men have. Um, apparently, some of the women are afflicted by this same issue. Uh, and everyone loves dessert, so everyone is invited next, next Thursday, that's 5 October, for a church-wide trivia and dessert night. Um, eat your dinner beforehand, uh, and then come to the church by 6.30. It says 7 online, but we want to make sure for those of you who have school nights, you can get done with all that. Um, depending on how many say they want to come, we'll either be in room 1 or we'll be in here on that Thursday. There will be child care. Um, for the bigger kids, like 6th grade and up, you want one of those on your team. So you're going to go and get a team of four to six people, but you want one of those folks because if there's a question about, like, SpongeBob or Owl House, you need one of those. Um, but, Kenneth, if there's a question about Frank Sinatra, that's why you need Sylvia on your team. So, um, <laughs> so okay, so if you bring dessert, you get bonus points, and then the winning team, uh, after all the questions, the prize is everyone on the winning team you get to choose, each of you gets to choose a song for the Christmas season. Ooh. Yep. Christmas appropriate song. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, that's what we did. So ne next, next Thursday. So friends, if this family of faith has ever been a joy to you, you're always invited to make an offering in the basket or online. Thank you for that. And thank God for leveraging that for good.
So uh, Susan took off to go help in the nursery, and we've started something. I think before COVID, y'all had sign-up sheets all in the back to help the many different tasks that it takes to have a, a full Sunday morning. Those physical sign-up sheets are, are back there. If you, if you want to help in some way and you don't know what that entails, you know, talk to me, talk to someone in that group, and we will make sure if it's child care, we'll do all the background checks and training. If it's hospitality, we'll show you how to make coffee or what, clean up any of that stuff. But it'd be a, a great help. It takes a lot every Sunday to make this thing work. So um, let's pray. Emotional God, we too often fear that to allow our anger is to become less like you. But let us meet you, God, in the prophets, because there you tell the truth. You hold fury at injustice. Your own self, embodied in anger, flipped the temple tables. So would you help us to become a faithful discerner of when to be calm and when to rouse? We reject that, ang that anger which leads to bitterness or hatred, and we will tap into a righteous rage when that which you have created is under abuse and neglect. The dignity of creation demands our emotions. And the dignity of our hearts demands that we lean toward you. As powerful as your spirit can be for transformation, we ask for your gentleness when it comes to the people we hold dear. We ask that your hand be on Janae's coworker, on Judy's mom, and the many, many people in our world who are navigating uh, these movements uh, and these ways of helping our ailing parents. We pray for Meredith, who lost her father this weekend. We pray for all those names on our prayer list and on our hearts. We pray together and with all creation through the words that you taught. Our Father, Father who art in heart heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And after the charge, you can grab your coffee, you can go help make burritos in the gym. But we say as we walk out, we go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the pain-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit.